Hello. So this is video number two on me playing around with Bifrost and um, you know seeing what I can do. Uh, all of these videos are sponsored by well not all of them maybe because I might do them afterwards because I'm quite enjoying playing around with Bifrost. But Autodesk are sponsoring well sponsoring this one. I didn't mean to say it that way. Uh, I have to say that on every video. So. Um, quite a waffle. Um, right, that's a sphere and what I'm going to do on this video is show how to bring in um, other types of stuff rather than just spheres and meshes. So I'm going to make a locator and then I'm going to use the position of the locator to affect um, something like a bush deformer, uh, it, like a sphere of influence, not a sphere because that's confusing, you know, a influence on the, you know, uh, you'll see what I mean when I start doing it. Um, right, so I need to get a oh, Bifrost graph up. Create graph. I'm going to drag the sphere in. Uh, I tried for ages trying to figure out how to get this locator in. and Because in ice you can just pull that in, but you can't do that here, which is a bit annoying. So to get the data from this locator into Bifrost, what you have to do is um, well, first of all, you need to make um, something here, like uh, another port, which you do by dragging anything onto that plus. And then I could rename this um, locator input or something like that. Don't need that anymore. And that locator input will now appear if I bring up the node editor. So I bring the graph in here, and if I open this up, see, locate picture input, brilliant. Okay, and then I can expose anything from this um, locator. So I could do the, I only want the translation on this, so I might as well do that. You could do the whole matrix, which is, you know, basically the SRT and everything in a matrix form. Um, but I just want the translation, so I'll just do that. Now, why is it not letting me do that? I don't know, but I imagine it's because that doesn't know that it's meant to be a X, Y, Z vector thing. So let me try and fix that by putting value there and plugging that into there and making this a vector three. So that's three point, that means, you know, X, Y, and Z. Did I say Z a minute ago? That's annoying if I did, because I'm British. <laughs> I did say Z. Um, translate locator input. And oh, that still doesn't work. That's quite annoying because that forms the basis of this thing. And <laughs> right, okay, let's try something else. Let's, let's forget that. It's probably because when it was born, uh, I mean, you know, when I made this thing, I started off with that going in and it still thinks it's that. So let's do a new one. Let's delete that one. So I'm right clicking delete this one here. Um, rename locator in. All right. That's going to work. Surely. Translate locator in. Yay. OK. So the position of this is now being brought into the Bifrost graph here, locator in. So let's also bring in, well, we've got it in there. We've got the sphere shape. Now the fact this is called sphere shape in is just because when I brought it in, it was that. But that, you can make, get any inputs from any of these things as far as I know. It's not, you know, it's nothing to do with the fact that this is the sphere shape. It's just, you know, it does that as a kind of handy naming thing for you when you drag something in. So what we want to do is make a push deformer again. So I'm going to do get point position. And remember this gets all of the point positions on this object. So that's like um, an array of, so that's the mesh. And then out of here is like the, an array, a list basically of all the point positions in the object. And so we want to get point normal and we can do the same thing 
Now, obviously, these two lists, because there's the same amount of points. Well, I mean, we're best. Bit, I mean, we're just getting every point, and we're getting the point position, and we're getting the point normal. So these two lists correspond, and that's why that I can add them together. But the differences between Bifrost and Ice is that you could add the point positions of a sphere to a cube which has a completely different amount of points. It'd be pretty stupid doing that because they wouldn't correspond. But ice sort of prevented you from doing things like that, which is kind of good in a way. But in some ways, it wasn't so good. Whereas this is more openly flexible. But the bad thing about that is that you, because it's more open and flexible, you know, it could, if you don't know what you're doing, I suppose the possibilities of doing something silly are higher. But I'd actually prefer it like this because, um, yeah, ice had a sort of context, which is quite hard to explain. Um, and it wouldn't allow you to break that context. Whereas this one is pretty much saying we well, do what you want, um, which is a good thing. But like as I say, it's, you know, dangerous as well. Right, so we've got the point position, the point normal, add them together, set point position. And we're doing that to this mesh. Output, that's going to output a new mesh, a BIF1. Oh, didn't like that. So oh, again, that's probably because I plugged that into something else. Let me try that out into a new one. Yeah, okay. Then I'll delete that other port. So that's popped up bigger because we've added the point normal. But what we want to do here is modulate this amount that the point normals are, um, the length of the vectors, based on how close they are to the um, to the locator null. So it doesn't matter that I've moved this over here, it's still calculating the stuff as if as if it were here. But then I'm just sort of shifting over in that direction. But effectively the calculations are what's going on here, not what's going on over there. That's just the final result, if you see what I mean. So we've got the locator there, we've got the sphere here. So all of this all of this relates to these positions here, not to that. That's just the output. That's the final result. This is the sum, and that's the e that's the you know answer to the sum. This, if you see what I mean, I don't know if that makes sense, but well, it makes sense. But I don't know if it's clear. Anyway, so the locator position is here as a value. So we could get the. Uh, if we want to get the um, length of this to each point here, what we need to do is subtract this position from that one, and that'll end up with a um, the the length. We can get the length of the distance between this and each point. Hmm. I can explain that clearer. Um, I will explain that <laughs> in a separate video, but for the moment, let's just do that. We go subtract and um, point position from that. And that's going to basically output a bunch of vectors. I want to do another video just on vectors and what I mean by that, because that's um, I think it's important to understand what a vector is. It confused me at the start. Uh, because everybody was like programmers were saying oh this is you know you get the vector of this and get the length and I didn't really know what they were talking about so if I want to make this for complete beginners I will explain all of that because it can easily throw you off but anyway if I subtract the point position here from the null position then you get vectors and then what I want is the length of those vectors <clears throat> so length and what this effectively means that is if this if this locator is right on top of a point position if they the same space the length is zero basically and if it's one unit away from it and it will, the length will be one pretty obvious but um you know so if i plug that length into um or you use the length amount to multiply how big the point normal is that means that when it's one unit away that point normal is going to be one and um, when it's right on top, the point normal is going to be zero. 
Now this is going to look visually pretty weird because, um, well, you'll see, or not weird, but it's just not particularly very useful. So we multiply the point normal by this length, and we plug that into the um, into that one. Now, what's happening here is you'll see if I if I put that right on top of one of the points. We're going to get that little indent in there. Uh, it might be easier if I show um, wireframe on shape. We're going to get that little dent in there because that now is not at that point there. It's not doing anything. And then when it gets further away, it's pushing out and out and out. So that's not particularly useful. So what we can do is we can change that with a change range node saying that when it's at zero, like here, we want it actually bulging out then further away from it, it's sort of dropping off to nothing. And there's a node for that called change range. And we plug that into the value and then that out. And oops, oh, I always do that because that's how you do it. Nice to double click on that, but it's over here. So from the start, so that is saying that where this value going in is at zero, it's going to do this. So from start to start. So when it's at zero, we're going to say make it one. And when it's at one, we're going to say make it at zero. So it's taking this from the start, from the end, and then we're basically swapping around and we're clamping it so it doesn't go over these or under these amounts. And then if I move this locator around, you can see that it's when this locator is zero distance away from any point on the surface, it's the value is at one, which is you know multiplying the normal by one. And when it's more than one meter away, one unit away, then it's not doing anything. Uh, so that's how you get the values of a null positional values into Bifrost. Um, if you need the values out, I think I showed that last time. I mean, there's nothing particularly useful here that we, we're getting out. Um, but um, I'll, I'll show you that in another video. I think it's quite good to just keep these uh, videos quite short, just keep to one thing. But anyway, that's, uh, that's a way of getting data in from the scene. Uh, via the node editor. So just to recap, I'll go to the node editor. Um, I made an input here, called it locator in. The Bifrost graph I dragged into the node editor. Um, the locator obviously also needs to be in, in, in here. Now I'm not particularly that up on Maya, so a lot of this sort of stuff, you know, is, is still relatively confusing to me. But basically, you know, you've got this is your locator, that's the translation value out, it's going into the in of the Bifrost graph, and uh, that means that it appears here, and then you can do stuff with it, and that's it. So, okay, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be doing another one very soon. Cheers, bye!